Let us look at an example of how to sequence n jobs on two machines. The production supervisor of Alliance Machine Works, which is an ancillary unit, has to schedule two jobs J1 and J2, each of which requires machining on two machines M1 and M2 in the order M1, M2. So here basically the production supervisor has two jobs that is J1 and J2 which needs to be scheduled on two machines M1 and M2 in the order M1, M2. So each job J1 has to go through M1 first and then M2 and then J2 has to go through M1 and M2. The machining time that is in hours required by the two jobs on the two machines is given to us. We have to determine the sequence in which the jobs should be scheduled to minimize the total machining time. So we have been given the time taken for J1 on machine M1 which is 3 and we have also been given the time taken by J1 on M2 which is 9. Similarly for J2 on M1 is 5 and J2 on M2 is 11. Now of course one is the fixed thing is that each job has to first be processed on M1 and then it will be processed on M2. However what we need to determine is should we process J2 first or should we process J1 first? So let us first understand the problem. So let's consider that job 1 is to convert a metallic sheet in the form of a square into a ring form. So this is our J1. So on machine M1 we will convert this square into a circular form and then on machine M2 we will convert this into a ring format. Similarly for J2 uh, let's take a different color to represent J2. So let's consider that that is also a metallic sheet but it is bigger in size as compared to J1. So J2 is to first convert this into a circular form which is on machine M1 and then into a ring which is on machine M2. Now it has been given that J1 will take 3 hours on machine M1 and it will take 9 hours on machine M2 and J2 will take 5 hours on machine M1 and 11 hours on machine M2. So one thing is for sure that the sequence of processing of any job is first on M1 and then on M2. What we need to determine as a production supervisor is that which job would be processed first J1 or J2 in order to minimize the overall production time. Now here since the number of jobs that we have to schedule is only two, we'll use the graphical method to solve this. Now I would like you to understand how the jobs will be scheduled on the time graph and then how do we finally conclude which job should be processed first. So let us first consider the sequence of J1, J2. Let us first look at the scenario for processing jobs in the sequence J1, J2. So first is J1 and then J2. Let us plot the processing of J1, J2 in a chart where on the x-axis we will show the time. So this is our 
x-axis. This is in terms of time in hours. And on the y-axis, let us show the machines M1 and M2. So below the line, we have machine M2. And above this line, we have machine M1. Now let's first plot job J1. Job J1 requires machining for three hours on machine M1. So we'll plot it as shown. This is one, two, three. So till here. Let me take a different color to represent job J1. So this is job J1, which takes three hours. Now while machine M1 is busy processing job J1, machine M2 will be idle. After processing on M1 is over, then J1 can be scheduled on M2, which is going to take another 9 hours. So from 3, another 9 hours, which takes up to 12 hours. So this is again job J1, taking 9 hours to be processed on machine M2. Now while J1 is being processed on machine M2, J2 can be processed on machine M1. So let me take a different color to represent job J2. Now job J2 will be processed for 5 hours on machine M1. So this can start from the third hour and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is job J2 for 5 hours. Now though job J2 is done with machine M1, it cannot proceed to machine M2 immediately because J1 is being processed on machine M2. So after J1 is completed on machine M2, which is the 12th hour, then we can schedule J2 on machine M2, which is going to take another 11 hours. So 12 plus 11, 23. So 20, 21, 22, 23. So J2 will be processed on M2 till the 23rd hour. So the processing of J1 and J2 both will be done by the 23rd hour here. And for the first three hours, M2 will be idle. Now let us look at the second scenario, which is processing J2 first and then processing J1. So J2 and then J1. Let's again make the chart for plotting the jobs. On the x-axis, we'll plot time in hours. On the y-axis, we'll plot the machines. So below the line we have M2 and above the line we have M1. Now in this scenario we are processing J2 first. So J2 will first be processed on machine M1. Now it has been given that J2 will take 5 hours on M1. 
so let's plot that so this is J2 taking 5 hours on machine M1 after J2 has been processed on machine M1 then it can be processed on machine M2 so J2 takes 11 hours on machine M2 so from 5 another 11 hours which is till 16 so this is J2 taking 11 hours now while J2 is being processed on machine M2 and machine M1 is idle we can process job J1 on machine M1 so let me pick the color for job J1 now job J1 takes 3 hours on machine M1 so from the 5th hour another 3 hours 1 2 3 this is J1 taking 3 hours on machine M1 now even though J1 is done on machine M1 it cannot be processed on machine M2 because J2 is being processed on machine M2 so once J2 is done with machine M2 that is on the 16th hour then we can process J1 now J1 is taking 9 hours on machine M2 so 16 plus 9 that is 25 so till the 25th hour we will be processing J1 on machine M2 so in scenario 2 both J2 and J1 will be finished or completed by the 25th hour also while J2 is being processed on machine M1 M2 is idle so M2 is idle for 5 hours now if we compare scenario 1 and scenario 2 scenario 1 was taking 23 hours to complete both J1 and J2 while scenario 2 will take 25 hours so definitely scenario 1 is better that is processing J1 first and J2 the next so scenario 1 is to be chosen that is processing J1 and then J2 now one thing to be noted here is that in scenario 1 we process J1 first on machine M1 now J1 on machine M1 takes 3 hours as compared to if we processed J2 first on M1 which takes 5 hours now because we process J1 first on M1 the idle time on the second machine that is M2 was only 3 hours in scenario 1 whereas the idle time in scenario 2 was 5 hours and if you note that is the difference between the two scenarios in the overall time so there was a difference of 2 additional hours of idle time in scenario 2 and that's why the overall processing time was 2 hours more so the idea is that if we can reduce the amount of idle time on the machines we will be able to reduce the overall production time so in this case we looked at a simple problem where we had to schedule only two jobs that is J1 and J2 on two machines in subsequent problems we will see how to schedule more than two jobs on two machines and how we can reduce the overall production time